Hi everybody, this is Willie at newandlostcrafts.com. Uh, what I'm going to show you today uh, is a little bit about alternate heating um, in case of a power outage or some sort of emergency. It's a great idea to have alternate heat in the house, especially if you live, you know, somewhere like we do. We're, we're in the Colorado Rockies, it can get very, very cold, and uh, when the electricity runs out, um, all of our heat in the house right now depends on electricity, even our pellet stove to run the uh, auger and the fans. So we have a couple of different things I can show you today. Uh, we have a traditional kind of tower kerosene heater and then a more portable uh, propane heater. And these guys are catalytic. Um, so I'm going to show you how to light both of them first of all. Uh, then we'll talk about the ins and outs, kind of the advantages, disadvantages of each. And uh, so let's get these things lit. All right, first with the kerosene heater. These things are really simple. You basically just kind of turn this knob, which is raising the wick. Um, inside the unit. And I'll open the door, maybe we can see something on the camera. And then a lot of them have auto ignition, which is just a battery powered ignition. And one tip when you have this auto ignition pushed down, if you kind of tap this, just raise that wick a little bit, they usually light right up. You can see that flame in there. Drop that down slowly, close the door. And, you know, really in about five to ten minutes, this thing will be going uh, really well. So that's how you light the kerosene heater. Um, I've seen a little box units. All of them light about the same way. Feed your kerosene in down here. Um, so let's light this little propane guy. These guys are neat. Um, they take the little portable cylinders. And there's bigger versions of this. Um, the most common ones I've seen are about twice the size. Uh, but they have their own ignition system as well. Here's the pilot light. And you keep turning. And you can see the light there, it's on low. So there's a low and high setting and that guy is good to go. Alright, so a little bit on the advantages and disadvantages of each. Um, I have two of these kerosene heaters, mostly for warming the garage, which we're in right now. Um, and I think the clear advantage of this one over the propane is you get a lot more heat out of this guy. Um, they're also a little bit cheaper to run. You can get a five gallon uh, container of kerosene for about 30 bucks right now and that'll warm this garage for, oh geez, a good solid month. I only warm it when I'm out here of course, but um, <clears throat> they're great. They're efficient. Um, you need to pay attention to the wick. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention <coughs> I actually bought this guy used for about 30 bucks and they sell for about a hundred brand new. <laughs> and it was funny, the lady that sold it to me um, said, I can't get the thing to light. Put a new wick in it, um, but the ignition just wouldn't work. So I was like, okay, well, I'm familiar with these things, let me take it home. You know, I'll pay you 30 bucks, and I'm pretty sure I can probably fix it. Well, this ignition system relies on batteries. Um, let's use the battery case back there. And I felt a little bit bad, honestly, but put some new batteries in it, and it worked just fine. Now, even if that didn't work, you saw me open this door here. You don't need the electronic ignition 
just raise the, the trap, put a match in there and it'll light right up. So that's a, a you know a little tip for y'all out there. Look for these guys on Craigslist. They're really falling out of popularity. Um, I can understand why um, some of the disadvantages of these units. Um, kerosene can get a little bit messy. And it's a liquid. Um, it can drip places. If you have it inside, it can ruin your carpet. Another tip with these guys, always light them out in the garage or outside. Some place where you don't mind a little bit of smoke smell for a while. You want them to warm up and then bring them inside if that's what you need to do. But don't, uh, don't light them inside or extinguish them inside because then you'll get a waft of that kind of kerosene diesel smell. So that's a little down on these guys. And then for these little propane heaters, man, I love these things. So, these guys are set up to burn catalytically, so really it shouldn't be a concern using them inside. Not as much as, as these, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. But, uh, these even have a, a carbon monoxide indicator, so if they sense the levels too high, they'll shut themselves off. They run on these really convenient little, you know, one pound propane cylinders, which they can be pretty expensive these days. Um, you can get an adapter for a larger tank to refill them. Um, the little tanks that you buy only last so long you've been doing that. Uh, but it's a lot more cost efficient way to do it. Uh, I think that's another film in the future. Um, but the great thing about these is their portability, their ease of use. Um, they put off a good amount of heat. Um, that's, that's one disadvantage to them over the kerosene heaters. The kerosene heater puts out an enormous amount of heat compared to these. Um, but really I have to say if, if you uh, you know, just want to heat a small room. Um, if you're in a condominium or a smaller place like that, in an apartment, this is probably the way to go um, versus this guy. Um, but the reason I have two of these is that I have a big garage and two of them will run you out of here, quite honestly. For this guy, it's not going to do much for, for a garage. Uh, of this size. Um, but at the same time, we have about a 2,000 square foot house. If we lose electricity, I use all three of these guys. Have one of these to clear down at one end, another one at another end, and we can keep the house plenty warm. And this guy kind of travels to whatever room we're in that's not in the main part of the house. Um, this guy is a lot lighter, a lot easier to handle. Um, you can't really mess up with the propane um, where you can spill the kerosene, but you know, if you practice, it, it's not that big a deal. Um, my recommendation is to kind of have both of them. Um, this guy puts out a lot more heat, um, but the portability and ease of use and safety factors for this guy are something to be, be talked about. Now these guys, all the new ones, uh, they do have a tip over mechanism in them, so if it tips over it's going to put that flame out. You might still get some leakage of kerosene, which, you know, on carpet or something is going to ruin your carpet. But uh, anyway, those are kind of the advantages and disadvantages of each. Um, I guess with that being said, this is Willie at newandlostcrafts.com. I hope this uh, helps you out a little bit if you're searching for this type of, of heat. I think everybody should have a couple of alternatives because uh, I, I don't know about you, but we lose power quite a bit up here with the, the heavy snow and the wind. And it sure is comforting to have these guys around, have some fuel for them, and uh, not have to worry about that.